This is a Reviewer TV, and we're here at the Black Cat Bar with uh, Mr. and Matt Parker. And um, hopefully we have enough light. The chandelier is a little a little dark, but... Yeah, everything, um, everything runs on a dimmer here. So. Runs for what? Runs on a dimmer. Oh, really? Can you, can you turn it up a little bit? I can turn it up. A little off. more light? Yeah, because yeah. it's so dark. That's okay. so Yeah, just a little while. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, sir. No Much better for the. Uh, oh yeah. Now, now I can actually see you. You're not just a, a forehead floating in the dark. I like it better. <laughs> I like it better before, but. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, now we can see it. Anything for the arts. And we're at the uh, the Black Cat Bar, which is a uh, actually a very historic venue in San Diego. It's uh, a bar that was the uh, the number the number two. Uh, yeah. I don't I don't put any credence in that story anymore, but it's been... Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Wait, it's what? actually Bank of East San Diego in the early 20s. And the story of it being the second Bank of America in San Diego was... I don't know where it came from, but I certainly repeated it many times until I learned of it. Ah, okay. It's, uh, there was a picture from San Diego Historical Society circa 1924, and it clearly says Bank of East San Diego on the building. Bank of East San Diego. Yeah, I didn't really have any evidence that it was ever a bank in America. And this was, this was before the crash, when they would yes. only have like one little bank, and uh, probably wasn't FBI insured. And, uh, yeah, well, that, interesting. I guess it was East San Diego back then when it was uh, dry also. They really created this part of town. Dry? They wanted it to be dry. Dry as in no bars? Yes. There's been no booths, and it's damn near dry now because there's only one bar in the area, and that's this bar. Really? It, within a how, how many block radius? You got yeah. tower yeah, exactly. until two. And yeah, you, you got the tower until two. And, uh, there are many blocks away. And, and so Not only walking distance. There, you can certainly walk. But, uh, there were many bars here 10, 15 years ago, but they've all dried up for whatever reason. Wow. I've heard stories. Fire, shootings. Yeah. Not paying your taxes. Huh. Which nearly happened to this bar. Well, we're, we're here to talk about this bar for Reviewer TV, and uh, you're you're doing uh, some bands now. Tell me about the type of music that you play here, Matt. Or you want to play here? You're looking to play here. Well, it, it took us about uh, two years to get an entertainment permit in this space from uh, the powers of the ABC and Vice. And now that we have an entertainment permit, we can do... Uh, music. So we've been doing DJs on alternate Mondays and Wednesdays with uh, all vinyl, mind you. What's that? Soul R&B? Soul R&B, jazz, blues. Uh, we do some 60s garage rock with Melody Mayhem. And, uh, music that has history, it seems like, no? Yes, absolutely. Generally, including the jukebox, there's really nothing new on there, and if there's anything new, it's some sort of throwback tribute to something old. There's a No Bunny CD on the jukebox. I kind of consider him to be a doo-wop, 50s rock and roll inspired punk rocker. So that, that sort of fits in. The kind of music we've been trying to bring in here is uh, good old honest music. Our PA doesn't have any reverb. No, no drum machines. No, no drum machines. It's just, it's honest in that um, it's made by human hands and human right. voices. From the hands and the fingers and out of the mouths. Um, kind of music that you would hear. Let me have the G Burns Jug Man has started a residency here the first Saturday of every month. Now they're straight up lead rap, right? Well, they are the best in old timey musics. Country, blues, bluegrass. I forget what this has on their business card. Um, but they actually do not have a jug. They have a tuba player who fills that position. But when listening to them, one gets the feeling that it's 1927 again, as the music that they play, uh, generally old standards of that era, and, and numbers like that is all music from pre-war, pre-World War II, I'm sure. And they, they touch into bluegrass, and that's that's World War II era, I suppose, but that, that's about as late as they get. So um, It sort of goes with the theme here, which if you take in the uh, building and its, its roots, the early 20s, and the somewhat faux formal atmosphere, uh, it, all, it all blends together to make a really nice... Faux formal belong. atmosphere. Yeah, well, there's a lot of unfinished surfaces, and uh, we've revealed a, a tile floor that's 
from the early 20s that's original to the bank, a mosaic floor that, that uh, was buried by some really awful Home Depot tiles that were, that were crumbling and falling apart that were only eight years old. So we dug that up to reveal that. It gives the place a lot more character. Yeah. But you're not going to change anything. Well, I'm not going to change anything that uh, would be original to the place, and certainly not going to change anything to, I don't know, I fought a battle of uh, trying to just have one television for the first year, but uh, I had to give in to, to the locals who wanted to watch more than one sporting event at a time. Oh, really? Yes, okay. you have to do what you have to do to survive, I guess. But, uh, Keep the sports addicts, fanatics uh, satisfied with right. your daytime patrons. Generally, we're if the ball game's not on, we are watching something like terror classic movies or old movies or uh, uh, DVDs of silent movies or DVDs of early cartoons or something ridiculous like that to uh, further enhance the atmosphere. I'm a, I, I personally am a, a news addict, so if I came in during the day, I might request CNN. Yeah. But, uh, I, but that's good to know that you. I might do it for you. I always discourage people to watch the news in bars because I always feel like uh, no news is good news. And, is generally bad news. Yeah, yeah. Well, we live, in, we live in one of the most mellow towns in the world, so watching the war unfold in uh, Cairo it, it kind of gives us a little bit of shock and Yeah. But, yeah um, I, don't, I don't discourage people from keeping up with the news. I just, I just don't like it uh, blasting in your face. It's generally bad. Absolutely. I'm going to have a drink of this stone brew here. So you've got... Um, you've got... Uh, the, the pool the pool crowd pool tournaments that you do two billiard tables two nine ball teams uh, one nine ball team is on their way to Vegas in a week to go represent San Diego one of four teams representing San Diego you guys are serious competitors in the pool games huh uh, I didn't intend it to be that way but uh, you gotta let things evolve so, uh, that's it. yeah. wow it's gonna be a good night it looks like hopefully yeah. Well, I wanted to, I wanted to find out about the music because I think it's really good to uh, <coughs> preserve traditions and, and music that uh, are in danger of dying. And I think Americana is something that I know that you had a, a background in when you were in Bartender's Bible. Well, Bartender's Bible. We're playing here. Uh, we'll be playing here in, uh, on the 31st. That's when I, when I met you, you were in Bartender's Bible and you were working down at the Turf Club. Yes. And um, that was a long time ago. I had no idea that you were going to one day own your own bar. Uh, nor did I. But here, here you are, uh, as, as fate would unfold. Yes. And, uh, uh, I'm very grateful to Joe, Tim, and Sam for having me at the Turf Club and uh, allowing me to build my nest egg. And, uh, it had changed hands and I continued to work there uh, under new management and continue to build that nest egg and I'm very grateful for those years of uh, so just, everything it taught me. He just saves every penny to buy a bar? Most of them, yes. Wow. And then it's like it, winning the lottery in San Diego. And I pulled every favor I could <laughs> possibly pull. Um, yes. And now, and now I wonder if I, if I should have dumped my money into something else. Uh, it, it's very time consuming and very demanding sometimes, but Hopefully it will be rewarding eventually when uh, some of the debt gets paid off and start putting money back in my coffers. So, so when you when you have a huge crowd here of like 75 or so, um, you don't have to have security because the crowd is typically pretty good. Well, yes. I mean, we've, we've had more difficulty with five people in here than we have with 70. Generally, if we get a crowd in here that's come for music, they're uh, all like-minded people who want to enjoy music and have a good time. So um, we do... We do have a doorman on uh, nights when we have music, and uh, I've been lucky enough to not run into any trouble, I guess. Yeah. Well, this uh, this week you've got the uh, Jug Band, the g Brothers Jug Band yes. on the 24th, is And that? Two Wolves, which is uh, Stephen Ray, Anders Larson, and a baritone sax player named Gabe. And uh, they bring very nice uh, just acoustic guitar, drums, and baritone sax, and it's uh, very 50s derived rock. That's uh, All right. pretty pleasant stuff. Steve Bar- Ray being a, a dear friend and having been in this, played music in this town for 20 years probably, from Burning Hands to Red Truck to Dear Johns and uh, everything else he's done. He also served uh, in what I think is a lifetime commitment. When you're in the Bartender's Bible, you're always in the Bartender's Bible. And he did, he did uh, really? play bass for us for quite a while. Like being part of a secret society or something, huh? Yeah, it's it's more being branded. It's somewhat of a curse, I think. And they are playing here on what day? Uh, Saturday, August 
31st. In Vermont. It's the first time bartender Bible will have played um, in over two years. And it will be the first time that the bartender Tenders Bible has played with Jim Austin, who's an upright gut string bass player, and Master Coda in probably, I don't know, three and a half years, something of that nature. Is it going to be all the original members? No, because uh, all the original members would be hard to, hard to get in one room. <laughs> if we all agree on who the original members are. Uh, it was a band that, that grew from a kernel, so um, I, I think that the, the band that we will have here on the 31st was, was probably be like uh, Deep Purple Mach 2, where it's you know, the band at its greatest strength. So, Are you going to be on stage for that? You'll be, you'll be part of that? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Playing bass? Yes. Well, no. Playing guitar and steel guitar. Okay. Um, when I was a young man, I was in a garage and I had a guitar in my hand and I was standing next to another guitar player and, and as it happens to a lot of beginning bass players, you get demoted at a certain point. And uh, that happened to me, so I had to go buy a bass to uh, play in a punk rock band, more or less. Okay. And uh, I love playing bass, but in Bartender's Bible, uh, I've been the guitar player and uh, lap steel. Good, good. Well, let's, if, if people want to find out more about or, or find out what your lineup here is here or your schedule, they can find you on Facebook. Do you have a website? Yeah, we're, uh, we don't have a website account? yet. Uh, there's there's a couple Facebook pages actually. You can find us online. Uh, I just got a smartphone, so maybe there will be further updates uh, coming. Get a Twitter page, Instagram, all Possibly, that. Possibly, yes, Instagram. And what is the uh, the name of the Facebook page for people to find you there? Well, there's Black Cat Bar, which is uh, a place, and then there's two words, Black Cat, one word, bar, second word, and that's more of a person page that allows you to reach out easier to friends and people, whereas the uh, Black Cat Bar business page is more of an object that uh, can only be reached from outside. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a love page you would like, yes. rather than a person you would prank. Exactly. We can contact the people who like us, but we can't go out and grab people. So, okay. so we, Black Cat Bar. Yes. Okay. And then the iconic neon sign, which is down there in the window, is on the page. That's people right. Can, the moment people see that, they'll recognize that. I hope so. Uh, I thought I'd put that in the window, and uh, the crowd would just start rolling in. Uh, it does draw people in from time to time. and. Uh, uh, I did draw that on a piece of graph paper and take it down to a neon, a neon shop in La Mesa. So. That's a great piece of fine art down there. I really like that. Right. Good. All right. Well, thank you, Matt, for everything. Thank you for the beer. Thank you, Ralph. And uh, hopefully we'll see everybody on the 24th and on the 31st. 24th and the 31st and uh, soon. Everybody. Awesome.